All right, a couple of interesting days coming up Friday and Saturday. Manzanar National Historic Site press release notes proud to host Dr. Selfa A. Chu. She's getting a program based on her latest book, Uprooting Community, Japanese Americans, World War II, and the U.S.-Mexico borderlands. Now, that's taking place this Saturday, May 12th, 1 p.m., inside the Manzanar Visitor Center West Theater. Dr. Chu from the University of Texas, El Paso, will examine the experience of Japanese Americans in the U.S.-Mexico borderlands during World War II, studying the collaboration of Latin American nation states with the U.S. government. Dr. Chu illuminates the efforts to detain, deport, and confine Japanese residents and Japanese descendant citizens of Latin American countries during the 1940s. Now on Friday, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services from the Fresno Field Office will join the National Park Service to conduct a naturalization ceremony for 25 local immigrants. That's taking place again Friday at Manzanar National Historic Site. Dr. Chu will also be speaking at that ceremony. See all the information, man's on our Facebook page or the website nps.gov. You'll want to get to slash man's with a Z. Well, an authors and artists uh, through the in Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association event taking place. Uh, the schedule has Thomas Kelsey, photographer, speaking Thursday at the Mammoth Lakes Welcome Center. And on Saturday, Gina Weber, artist, Kathleen Hahn, author, and Jasmine Beegler, photographer, speaking at the Annual Council for the Arts, 6 to 8 p.m. in Bishop. Also Saturday, David Woodruff, who does such a great job with our Tales Along El Camino Sierra on Alt 92.5 Sierra Wave Radio. He's going to be speaking at the Dow Villa in Lone Pine Saturday, 7 to 9 p.m., and then David Kirk Saturday and Sunday at the Eastern Sierra Interagency Visitor Center in Lone Pine. Urge you to go onto the website esiaonline.org or give a call to 760-872-1220 for more information. Well, children and community partners joined Inyo County Department of Health and Human Services as well as the Inyo County Superintendent of Schools for the Children's Memorial Flag Day Raising Ceremony. That was held April 27th at the Superintendent of Schools office. Children's Memorial Day concludes April's Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month activities by honoring children who have lost their lives as a result of child abuse and ne neglect. Nice press release notes the ceremony was attended by representatives of the community, Inyo County Superintendent of Schools, Health and Human Services, CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocates, Inyo County Probation Department, as well as Sheriff's Department officials and children from Jill Kinmont Booth School and the preschool. Ceremony was opened by Marilyn Mann, Health and Human Services Director. Comments were made by Inyo County Supervisor District 2, Jeff Griffiths, who, as a former foster parent and longtime advocate for children, spoke to the importance of the prevention and intervention work that is done by community agencies to support children in the community. Jeff Griffiths was followed by Judge Dean Stout, presiding judge of the Inyo County Superior Court. Judge Stout started his career on the bench overseeing dependency cases, been a longtime advocate of children in our community. Judge Stout spoke about not only the children who experience abuse and neglect that come through the court system, but also those that are unknown to the system and the importance for community awareness about violence and the impact on children. Judge Stout, Jeff Griffiths and Dan Tothero, Inyo County First District Supervisor, as well as the current chair of the board, ran raised the Children's Memorial Day flag, followed by a moment of silence led by Dr. Lisa Fontana, Inyo County Superintendent of Schools. Hey, that full, nicely written press release posted on SierraWave.net. Also posted, a first-person account of last Friday's opening of Tioga Road, State Route 120 West. While the pass isn't open, they did open Tioga Road from the lower gate to the Yosemite Park entrance. And this was written by Christine Naylor, Caltrans District 9 Maintenance Public Information Officer. And she noted that on the morning of May 4th, uh, it arrived with a burst of sunshine. Clouds dotted the tips of the Sierra. The skies had reached a vibrant blue. US 395 sparsely strewn with travelers. Now, as 
Nadler drove north from Crowley Lake to Caltrans Winter Closure Gate on Tioga Pass. She said she enjoyed the anticipation of the ceremonious reopening of that gate at 8 a.m. by Caltrans Levining Supervisor Randy Walker. Now, ceremonious, according to Nadler, said eh, meant she'd snap a few pictures while uh, Randy and her waved happily as travelers drove past the gate. I love that. Randy Walker and his crew, hey, they've been working hard over the past several weeks, clearing rock falls, mudslides, uprooted trees. All the damage from the events also required extensive roadway repair work. Nice story by Christine Nadler. Please check it out on SierraWave.net. We'll be back with a weather report and a couple more pieces of news.